Hey guys, so I have something I've never ever talked about on this channel, and I'm going to talk about it today. I really want to learn how to draw animals, but it scares me, and it feels like learning how to draw all over again. So I drew a griffin instead. Before I get into that, let's talk about what really got me motivated to make this art, the Animal Artist Collective. The AAC was founded by Denise Soden of In Liquid Color and Jennifer Charlie, both YouTube artists who want to create an art collective based around animal preservation and environmentalism. Every other month, the AAC creates animal art on a theme that's voted on by their audience. I think they might be at like eight or nine total members now, but they do have guest artists every month, and they also allow unofficial entries, such as this one. The official AAC members sell the original art pieces, and a portion of the proceeds go to an animal-based charity or similar group of their choice. I really admire the Animal Artist Collective, and I really love what they do. Links will be down below in the description box, so if you need more info or you want to check them out, please do so. I wanted to participate unofficially for a while now, but one thing was in my way. I don't draw animals. I say don't instead of can't because I know I'm capable of learning. I know I could do it if I really tried. But there's this huge roadblock to me learning, and that is... Well, I'm scared of getting it wrong and not doing whatever creature I'm drawing justice. I actually did draw something for their last theme, and then I just never painted it because I worried it just wouldn't be interesting or good enough. I got around that fear the way I tend to get around all my art fears by leaning into that side of me that loves fantasy, and I drew a fantasy animal instead. In this case, my favorite fantasy animal that isn't a mermaid, the griffin. It's not the first one I've drawn, but it's probably been a good 14 or 15 years since I've tried. In case you aren't familiar, a griffin is a mythological creature usually depicted as being the front half of an eagle and the back half of a lion. Their imagery is used to denote power and guardianship, but they can also represent fortune and treasure in a similar way to dragons. They're also super similar to the hippogriff, which you probably know from Harry Potter. I don't know if it's the internet's influence or what, but depictions of griffins, or rather what animals they're made up of, have gotten a lot looser over the years to the point that they can be pretty much anything. Usually they still have an avian front end and a mammalian rear end. I had thought up the idea of doing a griffin before the theme was decided, actually, because I knew doing a fantasy creature would take a lot of the pressure off of doing something perfect. Not that I didn't look at reference for this art, but I didn't feel as stressed to get everything exact, especially when it came to painting it, which you can probably tell. So, when the voting ended and I realized AAC's theme for this month would be urban animals, the first animal that came to mind was crows. Call me weird if you'd like. I know they're noisy, and they do eat roadkill and all that jazz, but crows are my favorite animals, and they have been since I was a teenager. Prior to that, it was horses, but we don't talk about those days. Crows are incredibly ubiquitous in Nova Scotia. They're probably also the biggest bird, aside from seagulls, that you'll see in our towns. I see crows more often, to be honest, since you see them far more inland than seagulls. They're probably also regarded as more of a pest, since they do get into your garbage, and people think they're loud as heck. I still love them, I don't care. Crows are just, they're so sleek, and they're sort of iridescent, and they're so cute when they're just kind of hopping along. And they're so incredibly smart. Which brings me to deciding on the, you know, the but half of the griffin, since I knew I also wanted it to be a clever animal. When it came to the non-avian side of the griffin, I wibbled between whether to do a raccoon or a red fox. Both are incredibly common urban animals here. 
but I realized a raccoon rear body would probably look really strange given how sleek crows are, so I decided to go with a fox in the end. Though, now that I'm thinking about it again, I think a pigeon and a raccoon griffin would be super adorable. I mean, it's got to have been done before, right? When I lived in the city, and yes, in Nova Scotia, it is the city because everything else is towns and villages, we didn't have any issues with foxes. Not to say that they don't exist there, but I never dealt with any in downtown Halifax. Small town Nova Scotia, meanwhile? Well, one of my good friends had one in the woods in her backyard that really wanted to eat all of her chickens. And there was a time my partner and I went to the beach and were blocked from getting to our car by an angry mama fox who did not want us getting near her den. We had to take the long way to the other side of the parking lot, which was down along the beach, except I wasn't feeling well, so it was basically the walk from heck. So that was fun. Thanks, fox. After a number of issues drawing them, during which I kept trying to draw the body kind of more like a horse, because that's what I'm used to from my little girl obsessed with ponies days, I managed to get the art looking more or less how I wanted. The painting process, meanwhile? I've never really tried to get texture in my watercolors that wasn't random splashes or abstract shapes. Trying to create fur and feathers was tricky, to say the least, and it's still not really where it should be, and I know that. I did resort to using colored pencils on the fox half to kind of help with the textures a bit, and I'm not sure if it really worked. I should also mention, as I worked on the background, I started getting frustrated because I couldn't get the gradient to lay down quickly enough before the paper started drying. There were so many edges that I needed to avoid on the griffin, and I ended up going over the tail and messing that up and making it kind of green before I was like, screw this. I have brand new masking fluid, so hopefully it won't rip up the paper. I did have some weird issues with this masking fluid on my last painting, The Summer Queen, which I'm not sure if it was the hot press paper or not, but it did change the texture of the paper and the paint went down super blotchy, but I thought I would try putting it over a painting and seeing if that would mess anything up. There are a lot of artists who work really well with masking fluid, and then there are artists who really hate the stuff and never use it. I'm just too anxious about getting color down and blending so I make stupid mistakes way too frequently and so the masking fluid is kind of a crutch. I think if I didn't want such a smooth background with this piece, or with my Summer Queen piece, then I wouldn't have cared so much, but I really wanted a seamless gradient, which didn't really work out how I wanted because even with the masking fluid, it it was still, it's, it's still not great, guys. Peeling off the masking fluid did take up some of the pigment of the watercolors underneath, but it didn't tear the paper or anything. I'm actually happy with the current masking fluid I'm using. I'll list it down below in the description box along with everything else I used. I probably should have fixed up the paint that was stripped away, but I didn't think things through clearly. I just kind of wanted to be done. In the end, I'm actually really happy with this piece. I know it's not my usual kind of art, and I know it could be a better representation of crow and fox anatomy, but I feel like I learned a lot working on this. So here's my question for you to answer down below in the comments. Do you have a favorite griffin-esque animal mashup? Or do you have a favorite mythological animal in general? Let me know. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give this a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!